Welcome to the Gym Heroes Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Peacock. Today's show is brought to you by Gymdesk, the easiest gym management software you'll ever use. Take payments, create marketing automations, track attendance, and much more. To try the software out free, go to gymdesk.com. No credit card or painful sales call required. Our hero today is Jeff Sherman, a longtime entrepreneur in the marketing and fitness spaces and founder of New Move. Spanning several important topics, we discuss info marketing, how to do excellent onboarding of new members, and how to leverage gamification to maintain motivation and improve retention. Without further ado, Jeff Sherman. Well, welcome to the show, Jeff. Um, I would like to, let's start by... um, you going into your your background with um, with gyms and um, and and marketing. Awesome, yeah. I mean, I grew up as an athlete, working out at a young age. I joined the military. In the military, a buddy of mine started a personal training uh, studio kind of thing. It was actually when personal training just became like you know a career. Most big box yeah. gyms didn't even have personal trainers yet, and uh, he was actually just leased an office from a big box gym and had the right to train on the floor. That's kind of where I got started when I was in the military. And my idea was when I got out of the military to go back to Baltimore and do the same thing. But four years later, by the time I got back, all the big box gyms already had in-house training staff. You couldn't just rent like a you know a room and then uh, have the rights to the floor kind of thing. So uh, I ended up getting a job at Bally's and uh, was our top sales guy right off the bat. And uh, when people are walking through the door, you know, thousands a day, you know, you get pretty good at you know at sales. So that's I was like the number one salesperson, and, um, and then uh, they started changing their structure around to where they, with the pay, and I was like, all right, I gotta got to do my own thing. So. Started a one-on-one personal training center. Didn't really know much about business, and um, just put you know some money together. Got us small, like thousand square foot. It was in the basement of this building. Started one-on-one training studio. Um, got a couple, got a couple of trainers, but they were just pretty much paying me rent. So I was pretty much like a glorified landlord. It was a horrible, horrible business model. Um, I was still in the Air National Guard. <laughs> I was still in the Air National Guard, and I got uh, deployed. I got activated. So it was two years. So it was going to be two months overseas, two months home for like the next two years. And I was like, oh man, you know, I'm not going to be able to keep growing my business this way. So I took on a partner, and then I started looking for ways, um, you know, to uh, to make money while I was away. And that's how, that's where I found, uh, you know, Bajor's Cool Land. He had at the time he had a product called High Tech Trainer. It actually yeah. allowed you to like create custom like workouts for clients and email it to them. I was like, really high tech. <laughs> but, <No. yeah. laughs> it was back then. <laughs> right. And uh, so we were working 12 hour shifts, and I was uh, I was over in, in Cutter. And uh, the people on my ship would work out with me. And then the people on the other ship that I was like making workouts for. So I was making like side money, you know, while I was over there. It's kind of cool. But um, when I, I started, started watching all of his videos and started, you know, saying like, oh man, like, because at the time, like personal trainers didn't like, like group training or group fitness instructors. They always just thought that was a trainer that couldn't sell like, you know, one-on-one or whatever. It was like a stigma mm. kind of thing. Like it yeah. wasn't as, you know, it, it was like looked down at if you're like a group trainer, like, oh, it's because you can't afford, you know, you can't sell like personal training or whatever. And for me, like coming from like selling high end personal training to uh, selling like group stuff, the price difference and everything was, su- was such an easy transition for me because I'm used to selling thousand dollar plus packages to now selling 200, $250 packages and with all the same benefits and more. You know, you get, you don't have to worry about scheduling, come in anytime you want. You're still getting you know, your body fat tracked and you got goal setting and all that stuff, nutrition help. So, so there's all the benefits of, uh, you know, one on one with group. And so I start selling some of my equipment, pushing my sides, you know, stuff to the side. And I was doing like small group training. And then when, um, when they just launched his Fit Body Bootcamp, I jumped on board with that. And I was like one of the first 10, 15 Fit Body Bootcamp locations as a licensed deal at the time. And we started out of like a gymnastics center. So I had my studio and I also had, but I, I had subleased uh, space from the gymnastics center. It was like 6 a.m. and uh, 10 a.m., two, two hours. That was all they would give me for like 10% or whatever I brought in, which was a great deal, you know. So within like three or four months, I was making more during those two hours at the gymnastics center than I was at my personal training <laughs> studio. You know, I was bringing in over ten grand a month off of two off of two class times. It was, it was kind of crazy, um, and only paying a thousand dollars to the gymnastics center. So you do the math; like, it didn't make sense for me to keep doing my <laughs> my one on one stuff. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah, so I ended up like closing down my studio, and some of my clients came to the boot camp. The other ones they weren't a good fit for it, so I uh, introduced them to other trainers or whatever. And um, so I was like all in with, with that stuff. So I uh, jumped in on Bedros's like, um, and this is back in like 2009, I think. <laughs> um, 
I jumped in on his info, his info marketing mastermind. And I created a soccer conditioning program. And um, I, I niched down to just women because I was playing quiet soccer still at the time. And I had my teammates that I had as one on one clients. I already had like programs for them, I already had pictures, you know, before and after pictures. So it was really easy to put together a conditioning program, you know, for female soccer players. And it did really well. Um, and I learned a ton of skills that, for marketing online that I wasn't using for my offline business. And nobody else was using online marketing tactics at the time for offline businesses. So I was like, why don't I just use the same stuff I'm learning for online for offline? And I like crushed it. Like I had like pretty much the first 10 listings on Google, you know, it had my, my blog, it had my Facebook page, it had my website, it had some YouTube videos, it had like a press release. It was all me. There was no other gyms on the first page. If you Google like <laughs> personal trainer, Baltimore, Baltimore boot camps. Even some of the local big box gym owners, they see me at like Starbucks. I'm like, I see what you're doing online. You know, maybe you should like come work for me or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I'm not sure if you can afford me or not. But so like, I was doing really well with that. Um, it just like blew up my my um, my offline business by using those online skills. And like today, everybody uses like, you know, funnels and, you know, online marketing tactics for offline businesses. But back then it was, it was like, you know, killing a mosquito with a flamethrower was, was really easy. <laughs> Yeah, man, I I'm sad I missed those days. I was I think I was I was probably still a teenager, but um, but it would have been awesome. You know, I I ran a little taekwondo club for a while. It would have been awesome to have for that stuff to have been brand new at that time because it would have been <laughs> so easy to to stay open and grow. But that's interesting because you just you just touched on digital marketing uh, for for gyms, and even though that's normal now, there's still a lot of gyms that don't do it or they do it like really poorly. Um, yeah. and I, I, I've seen you, I've heard you mention, uh, info marketing a couple of times. Can you, can you kind of briefly go over what info marketing is and how it works? Yeah. So it, the main difference is if you have a one-on-one -on -one business or offline business, you give content and conversations with your clients. They ask a question, you give them the answer, right? Mm -hmm. So you're basically just doing that before, you know, to the masses, you're just putting it in a blog or putting it in a video and you're posting it online. People getting to know, like, and trust you through your content, not having cop, like, in like real life conversations with them, you're just having the conversation to the internet and people are you know, finding it when they need it and then finding you when, when they need you. So the more content you put out there, it's out there forever. You know, you put YouTube, you know, it's a search engine. It's there forever. And, you know, Instagram and stuff, it's there for a couple of days. I mean, if they scroll through, you know, through your gallery, it might, they might find some stuff and same with Facebook, but it's, you know, it's there one day on the next, but you're putting it on your blog, you're putting it on YouTube, stuff like that. It's there, you know, it's there forever. Um, people, find me all over the place. There's like old press releases that people still find me through and stuff. It's crazy. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's just information marketing, just putting out information um, mm -hmm. on the internet uh, to help people. Are, do you, did you draw influence from like Dan Kennedy's stuff? Like the, I think he calls it his magnetic marketing with, and like pulling in the information marketing and like um, setting it in, t in, t in like a funnel, like a, a because I see you've got some of the the um, click funnel stuff in the background. How does um how does all that? I guess that's two questions. Uh, but <laughs> number one, were you influenced by Dan Kennedy? Number two, um, how do how does the landing pages and the funnels fit into the information marketing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm from Baltimore originally, and Glazer Kennedy you know, was in Baltimore. Um, really good friend of Mary Glazer's. Really good copywriter. If you ever need one. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, heavily influenced um, with all the direct marketing. And so are all my business mentors. Every, pretty much follow any, you know, internet marketer back to Dan Kennedy, probably, you know, some kind of influence from him for sure. Yeah. Um, what was the second part of that question? Yeah. How does, how does the, um, like the information marketing or info marketing fit into building of like a, like a direct response funnel, getting people into sure. the emails and the landing pages yeah. and all that? Yeah. If all you do is put out content with no call to action, people are going to like your stuff. But they're gonna like your content. They're not really gonna, you know, they're not gonna be. They don't know what the next step is. So direct, you know, direct response marketing is just telling them what the next obvious step is and make it, you know, a natural step for them to mm -hmm. do. It's like if you like this, yeah. you'll love this. Click here. You have to have a call to action, or you're just putting out content for free, like you're working for nothing. Like you got to bring them back. It's all like a return path. So you have to create that return path. You put the information out, and you create multiple return paths, multiple ways for them to get back in contact with you. Whether it's another piece of content, whether it's like a, you know, a giveaway or a program or an opt-in or whatever it is, bring them back into, you know, your your uh, whether it's email list or if it's a live event like a workshop or if it's a free session or whatever it is, get them to take action and and come in. But what the content is doing is creating a, making that cold market a warm market and getting them to know, like, and trust you before they make a decision. Awesome, great. So um, pivoting now to um, you've 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 
in other podcasts, you've talked a lot on some really cool onboarding processes for being bringing new members into your gym. Um, so how can you how can you scalably introduce people to your business and get them onboarded, or you you'd use the term before like indoctrinate into your culture and your values and the, all that kind of stuff. So as far as like the onboarding that I talked about, it's mostly like once they become a member, like you have that mm-hmm. call it the magic ninety days. Like if yeah. they stay past the ninety days, they're used to, they're usually going to stay for a year or more, and they're usually going to refer you know one to three people uh, during that time. But it's like it's normally like from the if they're on a trial, it's like getting them past the trial. You know, most people are going to quit before the trial is over, or you know, or not continue after that. But once they're committed, once their payment goes through, um, a lot of people have like a thirty day money back guarantee. You know, so if you can get them past that mm-hmm. first month, going in the second month. Um, you're, you're, you're going to, your churn rate's going to go way, way down. And the main thing is, you know, making people feel good about themselves. And that's how I, you know, incentivizing people. Uh, and that's how I got into gamification, which I think we'll talk about a little bit later. Yep. Um, but it's really just incentivizing people to take action. That's good for them. So, and giving them recognition, which makes them feel good, makes them feel important. They don't want to feel just like, a, like they're just a number, like you could care less. Like once you take their money, it, like the worst thing you do is not talk to them again. Like a lot of people, they take their money and then they're on to the next person. They were giving them all this attention leading up to that. As soon as the trial's over and their payment is there, they can see if they can feel like you don't care about them as much anymore. They're gonna, you know, people aren't down. Like they're gonna know, like you just were waiting for their check to go through and the commitment to start, and they're gonna be out of there, you know. Um, and uh, one of the things is like with group training is they need like-minded friends. You know, they, you always heard like you're like you become like the five people you hang hang around the most or whatever, right? So, mm-hmm. but first, one of the first things I do is I join me in congratulating so and so for joining our program. So even if they're in the trial, but they committed to continue afterwards, I'll already go in and say, join me in congratulating our new member. Like you're, you're in the trial, but you're already committed. So you're a member. And um, I prep them during, you know, when I'm signing them up, I'm like, hey, we have this, you know, Facebook group. It's like a family in there. And, uh, you know, everybody, you know, shares, you know, what, what's working, what's not working. And there's, I guarantee no matter what you're going through, there's somebody in there that's going through the same exact thing or has already solved it and they'll be able to help you. So I'm going to introduce you in there and I'm going to ask you like, what's the number one thing that's holding you back from reaching your goals? If you could just answer that. And I guarantee one to three people will have a you know better answer than I will because I might not be able to relate to it, but they will. So if you could do that, that'd be great. And they always commit to doing it. So as soon mm-hmm. as I do this, join me in congratulating so and so. I ask the question, they, you know, just, you know, introduce yourself, tell us like you know why right now is really important and what you're struggling with, or what you struggled with in the past to reach your goals, what's kept you from keeping you know, from reaching your goals. They they write the answer, and I already have like you know you have like there's th- three to five members who are like founding members. They've been there from ever. They love to be involved. They love to know everybody. They love to help. So usually one, you know, you prep them like, Hey, if you guys just do me a favor and just answer, like just give them an answer, you know, whenever I introduce new people, that'd be great. And they, they'd love to do that because the people love to help. And if they, the worst thing you can do is, is them actually like say who they are, say what the problem is and then crickets. Like that's the worst. So then if that happens, then I'll go in there and I'll give an answer, but then I'll tag somebody like so-and-so probably is a better answer, but this is what, you know, this is what most people mm-hmm. do. And that way, you know, they at least have something. Um, but nine out of 10 times, my, you know, especially once you prep people, once it becomes the way of doing business, they, the first person will, will give an answer and then two or three other people will chime in. Because in a way, well, it's hard for people to be the first, but you already have those three to five people who you've already talked to and like asked for their help to you know, encourage new members and stuff. So you do that. Now they've already had somebody they can relate to. They already have, you know, they feel like they've already made friends and um, you know, they're, they're feeling great about their decision and, and what they've done. Right. So that's, that's usually the first step is to join me in congratulating. Um, the second thing that I do is I send them a, a welcome package. So we um, would send them a t-shirt. And uh, we use print. We used to use Printful, and um, so we would mail it to their address. We would pay for it and everything, obviously. And so we would get a notification when it was delivered. So as soon as the, like as soon as it was delivered, we'd be calling them. Hey, just wanted to check in on you, see how everything's going. Oh, by the way, did you get the package that I sent you? Oh yeah, I just opened it up. It's awesome. It's a t-shirt. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Just wanted to let you know about um, our selfie contest that we do every month. You know, you just take a picture wearing the t-shirt and make it make your profile picture on on um, on Facebook or post it to your gallery on Instagram. And just say, you know, and then just put what you like best about our program so far. Um, and you'll be in the running to win a prize. Like everybody that posts a selfie during the month, we, you know, give away a prize or whatever. Could you do that? Could you, know, could you do that for me? Like, oh yeah, sure. But, you know, you just gave them a t-shirt. They're not going to say no. Um, and then we really did do this contest. So you're getting brand awareness. People are putting their, you know, the pictures of, the, of you with their, of them with their, with your shirt on or whatever on all of our social media every month. So it's great. And they leave it as a profile picture on Facebook. It's, you know, it's up for a long time. But what that's doing is it's commitment to your brand. And I'm like, yeah, I just joined this 21 day rapid fat loss challenge. Your fit body, it's awesome. You know, you, you know, whatever. If they cancel in like three weeks, you know, they have to take that picture down, especially on Facebook because it's a profile picture, right? Yeah. So if they're pain, that's painful. They have to like take that, 
you know, take it off. A lot of people I've had people like give stickers, they put them on like their car, they put them on like their uh, their computer or whatever, their laptop. And they quit, they can't keep looking at that gym sticker on their car knowing they quit. They got to peel that sticker off. There's a pain of disconnect there, you know? So they're making a public commitment to your brand. Their friends are going to be asking them a couple of weeks later, Hey, how's that program going? They're not, they're not going to want to say I quit, you know? So they publicly announce how great you are. They can't go back and, you know, say one at a time, like, Oh yeah, it sucked. You know, they're, <laughs> they have to, you know, they have to make it what they said it was. And it's ultimately up to them for most places that are running a good program. Obviously, as you know, it's up to them, you know, them to get the most out of it. So then that'll actually help them, you know, commit more and do more because they don't want, you know, they want to be in line with what they said, you know, to the, to yeah. the internet kind of thing. So those two things are the most important. Um, and, uh, if you can get those down, you pretty much your onboarding is, you know, is set. The rest of it's just like icing on a cake. And we have a bunch of other things, you know, it's a whole, you know, I could talk about it for an hour. It's a whole, it's a whole you know, uh, presentation that, that I give, but, um, but just the importance of incentivizing them, making them feel part of the community, making them feel part of the process is uh, super important to keeping them on, you know, long-term. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I, I, I wonder why people, more people don't do stuff like that. Um, but it's, um, I, I remember reading from like Cialdini, like, um, Dr. Cialdini, he talks about, you know, some of the, some of the, um, he calls them weapons of persuasion, but, uh, like, you know, reciprocation is powerful. So if you give a physical product to somebody or something, a token to them, that's really powerful for inclining themselves towards you. So they've already tried something out. They like it. And then you send them that package, you know, that, that really helps seal that deal. And then you have the social aspect of it of, um, oh, hey, this is what I'm doing now. This is me. Um, it's really fun. It's really cool. I, I endorse this. And now, now there's the social pressure of, um, not, not of people like having an undue influence of, on them, but they've projected themselves as one thing. And then it's going to be more painful for them to renege on that than it would be to, um, to, to not do it. So it's <laughs> um, exactly. And it's, yeah. it's powerful, but it's, and, and it's good for them, you know? Yeah. So. It's good for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not like a bunch of toxic people are like influencing them to do it. It's like, no, you, you decided to do this. And then now you've, we said, Hey, you want to do this thing. And now you've projected yeah. that, that image onto all your friends. And it's going to be embarrassing to go back on that and be like, yeah, no, I'm just a fat slob. <laughs> I didn't like it. That's I'm just going to go back right? to being a couch potato. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's great. Um, and I really like using like, like, uh, I think you mentioned the Facebook groups and, and, or some people I think have their own platforms that they use, but so that you have contact with the community of the gym, even when you're not inside the gym. So you have your buddies yeah, that sure. you work out at the gym, but then you also have contact. Um, so you feel like, you feel like you're in contact with the gym all the time. Um, how do you, how do you recommend? So, so say somebody maybe falls, falls off the wagon. A couple times, or they miss class. Like, how do you recommend um, following up on those people? Yeah, like a lot of I, I'm I'm under you know the, the way that I think is like you need to follow with them. You have to have an automated process to follow with them as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. If they miss a whole week without telling you they're going on vacation, they need to be you know followed up with. Uh, other people they're afraid to follow up with them because they think they might quit, which is fine. Like I don't want them there if I'm not helping them. I'm confident enough in my you know lead generation, sales, and marketing that I will get somebody in there that wants to be there. Because um, if not. You know, if they're still paying, they're disgruntled and they're not getting results. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to bring anybody else in anyway. Mm -hmm. You're doing them a favor by letting them, you know, go. There's more chance for them to come back if you were like, yeah, if it's not a good time, you know, it's not a good time to let them go. Because um, I guarantee if they go out with some friends they haven't seen in a while and the one friend like lost like 30 pounds and all happy and full of energy and the other friend's like, oh my gosh, looks so good. Like, what did you do? And she's like, I did Zumba or whatever. And that your, your, your client is going to, you know, they're, Everybody asked them what they're doing. Like, well, I was doing this like boot camp thing, but I'm going to try Zumba now. Like, whatever, it doesn't matter what that thing was. Every, all the people in that group are probably going to go do Zumba. You know, so if you don't have checks and balances as far as goal setting and helping them constantly be, you know, reaching a result, then uh, you're not going to get referrals. And it's only a matter of time before, you know, they go somewhere else. If they're not working towards something, even if they've been with you for years, if they're not working towards a goal and they, you know, just happen to see one of their friends out or whatever. It looks great and get the conversation going. It's not going to be talking about your gyms. We're talking about their friends program, whatever it is that they're, that they're doing. So um, that's why my first piece of software I ever created was flip was uh, fit clients. And um, that helped, you know, group training uh, coaches hold, you know, up to a thousand people accountable to their weight and fat loss goals automatically. So they it would know like, if they didn't put their weight in every week, you know, 
mm. and would follow up with them with autoresponders and yeah. send you a list of everybody that didn't weigh in and missed their way in. So you knew exactly who to follow up with. You start to follow up manually, you have a list of like 15 people rather than going through and checking a thousand different people who came in, who didn't, who you need to call. You would know by the people that didn't weigh in or whatever. So, yeah, that's really useful. That, that, that actually leads me to um, the question of like how, how technology has helped you enable to do all this stuff. Because that, like, if you're trying to track that in spreadsheets, that's really difficult. Did you use a lot of different softwares? You have like one unified so, um, software? Like, what's going on? Yeah. So, I mean, now, now there's tons of options, but like back then there was no options. Um, I was doing email marketing and stuff, and we had autoresponders. And then, you know, it was called Infusionsoft at the time, and it's called something else now. But um, it, it had if then sequences, like if they opened the email, then they would get this other email, or if they didn't open the email, they would get this. And um, so at the time, you know, I had like 100 members. We were still using like an old portable like file box. <laughs> and I had my assistant, like on Monday, she would check like the first, you know, so many people's files and see who waited, who didn't, write down the names, call them up, you know. The, next, the second day of the week or second week of the month, this many, you know, this part of the alphabet and so on. So every week she was calling and following up people to see how the results were going. It became like a full time job. And I was like, she, we can't maintain this, you know, moving forward. But one of the guarantees that I gave people when they joined was I guaranteed they would never have more than a bad week, like that we would be on top of them. And if they missed their goal that week, we could get them in for consultation as many as they needed to see what the problem was and figure it out. Um, that was getting harder and harder to, uh, you know, to deliver on that promise. So, uh, I looked around for solutions without going on anything, so I just decided to create my own. And it was I got the idea from Infusionsoft with the if then sequences. So it's like, um, and that's when I and that was the first thing I partnered with Bedrosun was building out the FitClients.com uh, software. Uh, his brother-in-law uh, create you know developed it at the time, um, and uh, yeah, it worked great. People are still using it to this day. It's on autopilot. I haven't tried to sell it in years, um, but because there's uh, so many other options and so many more robust things out there, um, that and I went on to other bigger and better you know projects. But um, it still works great, and people are still, you know, still have like 500 users or something on it. But um, <laughs> it solved that problem easily, um, as far as keeping them accountable to the weight, weight and fat loss goals. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Okay, so let's let's move on to gamification. I think that um, I think a lot of gym owners probably like have no idea what that is. So we can start with the, the broad question of like, what even is gamification? What does it even mean? Yeah. So. Most people have either done or are currently doing some form of gamification. Mm -hmm. um, and all gamification is is incentivizing them to do anything. So if you're doing a challenge where they're going to win a prize, if they're like, you know, like a weight loss challenge, that's gamification. You're incentivizing them, you know, by losing the most weight, you win a prize, you get recognition, you get a trophy, you get a medal, whatever you get, you know, that's that's uh, incentivizing them to take action, actually do something. Um, that's a form of gamification. Likes on Facebook is a form of gamification. You're you're comparing your likes from one post to the next. The next, you know, you're incentivized if you're if you see a lot of likes, incentivized to do more posts because you like it, it makes you feel good. Um, so uh, so most people are doing or have done some type or some form of gamification. I'm actually in the process right now of creating a game specifically for trainers um, that they can license and be able to use. It's like a 21 day healthy habit challenge where mm. you know we have a leaderboard. So as they take actions, 21 days, 21 habits. It's three different stages. And um, so there's a leaderboard. As they take action, do the steps in the, inside the game, they, they get points, they go up the leaderboard so they can see how they compare with other people in the challenge, who's doing that, you know, who's taking the most action. Um, there's also where they can earn like tangible items like a t-shirt or a hat or a journal. So again, you're, you're earning rewards and you're leveling up. So when you complete a stage, you can, you can earn some swag or you can earn like a, you know, we have been doing like military style coins so they can get a whole collection. And then when they get the whole collection, it could be like a discount for like a challenge or something coming up or whatever you want to put behind it. Um, so any kind of, you know, incentivize, you know, anybody can incentivize somebody, whether it's through like tangible items, whether it's through points, whether it's through like a digital product, it could be like a bonus, um, you know, like training or something like that. Um, anything like that, it can earn digital medals, uh, badges, certificates, people love certificates, uh, you give them like a different title. Like we're doing a, um, a game for like this company called uh, Epic Investor. And then in the, the one is to be like Epic Journeyman, Epic Scout, and then eventually they earn the title of like Epic Investor um, as they you know get more and more, uh, you know, as they learn the skills as they go through the game um, and they earn that title. So you can come up with cool names, you know, going through your game. And, you know, again, it's recognition, but it's also like the, an identity. They're kind of putting on this like suit of armor as they're moving through and becoming a different yeah. person and getting a different title. 
So it makes it fun. Um, and they're doing it alongside their friends or alongside other people. They get to know the other players. They, they follow the other players. Some of them are funny Some because they're using video and pictures and um, like that to for their entry. So they get to know the people because they can see the video entries and stuff um, that prove that they actually did take the action. Um, but if you do it in real life, then they're taking the action in your gym or they're like, you know, people have done like plank challenges for the posting pictures of them like planking between two cars or planking across two bar stools or something like that. And people are like, Oh, that's so cool. Or oh, that's awesome. And you know, so um, that's a form of gamification. And I'm mean, trying to see who can get the most likes on their plank challenge picture. And then that person wins the prize kind of thing. So there's a million ways that you can gamify anything really. Yeah. So what, what I'm hearing there is that you've got, you've, you've even got different, there's different ways to earn points. There's different types of accolades and swag and badges and things that you can earn. And then you have different ways that you can earn them. So you, you have things that are more, um, more ad hoc, I guess you could say, like who can get the most likes on the, on this, on the picture or the, this particular, maybe a seasonal challenge. But then you have like things that are kind of set, like a structured progression, like in, like in martial arts or jiu jitsu, the belts is actually a good example of a type of gamification that people don't exactly. even realize that they're, yep. they're engaging it. So you, you have the belt system and the belt system is pretty, jiu jitsu may be a little bit more fluid, but like for a traditional martial art, like karate or taekwondo, you got to know this kata, you got to know this, you know, these one steps, you got to do all these, all four of these things to get your next belt. And that doesn't change. It's for everyone. They have to run through that. So there's like the, there's the set structure, the set journey. And then there's also these things you can do on the way to enhance that, um, to enhance that journey. Are there, are there any things that you feel like, um, because I, uh, I know that, that with gamification systems, you can, you can, potentially gamify anything is there anything that you feel like you shouldn't gamify or there maybe there's a type of, of of gamification that you should avoid for those sorts of things or is it just you think it should be used can be used just for anything i mean it can be used just for anything um you don't want to you don't want to add gaming elements just for the sake of adding gaming elements because after a while people just don't care because like if they get if they yeah. earn something but there's but nobody knows like then it doesn't it doesn't get the desired effect it all comes down to recognition attention and making them feel good so mm -hmm. like if they if they earn like you know a badge or they conquer like a level and they it, like says congratulations to them but there's no like public announcement there's no notification there's no like way they can share it to instagram or facebook or whatever then after a while like they don't really care like oh okay it says congratulations to me but no big like nobody here but if everybody in the game is like oh awesome job good job keep going that was so cool you man you're moving along so that's become powerful um, and then yeah, that dopamine hit from people saying how great they are um, and giving them attention. So that's that's what you have to be careful of is like not just giving thing you know you know giving things just to give it to them that really mm -hmm. don't have no meaning on the back end. And that's yeah. where a good facilitator comes in because the software can track pretty much anything, but you still have to facilitate some of that stuff on the on the end. Like in one of the games that we have, it's a self help game. It's a high end uh, two thousand dollars, and at the end you you earn this uh, custom Nevada watch. But we don't mail it to you. You have to come to an event, and then you get it on stage. But if they never come to the event, and they don't ever, they don't get you know they don't get the, the custom watch as a finisher of the game, and they get mm -hmm. presented in front of all the people, all the attendees, and they get all these you know it's like getting your green jacket. You know you're in the club, but you got you have to watch, but you have to come to the event to to get it. Mm -hmm. So you uh, you're making a big deal about it, um, and uh, so yeah, it's really just the meaning that you put behind uh, the incentives or the rewards is what makes it so powerful. Yeah, that's, I'm glad you clarified that because I've seen, um, some people like, yeah, you can gamify anything. And they're like gamifying, like every little action they want you to do in the onboarding process, every part of like just regular goings on in the, in the dojo or in the gym. And I was like, man, this is over the top. Like you, if you're, if you're trying to gamify everything, every single thing, you're what you're going to end up with people just burn out on it it's like <laughs> there's the it's like it's not there's no accomp there's like no accomplishment or people are gonna they're gonna burn out on the little things and then not be shooting for the bigger accomplishments that are more meaningful um and it's definitely and i have you know i did i, I did did some schooling in um educational psychology and you have different ways that you have your extrinsic and your intrinsic motivation and um, the intrinsic motivation is the best kind of motivation, but um, it can be tricky to properly cultivate an intrinsic motivation using external types of rewards. It is possible, um, especially with gamification stuff. I think that's a really powerful thing that, that people are not 
using enough yet for that kind of thing. But there, but you do have to be careful with it. Yeah, the 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 things you have to be careful what it is that you reward and and um, how often you reward that. Um, yeah, so that definitely there's potential for it to get um, to go haywire with people that don't really know what's going on <laughs> with the whole yeah, with the whole sure. thing. Yeah, I mean, if it's overused, it'll lose its effectiveness, just like anything else. Especially if it's overused, but then underutilized on the back end, as far as like putting something behind it that actually means mm-hmm. something, um, then it'll lose its effectiveness. It's actually worse than not having it at all. Yes, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, ha- have you seen invocation improve retention within gyms and uh, being able to maintain the motivation to to work out over a, a period of time? Yeah, like not necessarily in gyms up yet, because like I said, I'm creating a game for trainers. Um, mm-hmm. But um, this was like my first, you know, thing outside of fitness that I've done. And I, again, I built the software for my own stuff at first because we had some high level like workshops that we were doing, anywhere from two to four thousand dollars. People were coming out and uh, learning some high level skills, and then um, we turned them into courses. And we were trying to uh, just get more people through the courses. And what we noticed is like people that were joining like our masterminds and our high level coaching nine out of 10 of them had finished one of our $2,000 courses or more. And so we're, but only um, at the time, 17% that bought the course was finishing the course. So we're like, man, if we can get, if we can increase people finishing the course, we should be able to increase people, you know, joining our high level masterminds, people, you know, signing up for our high level coaching on the back end. So we started um, adding like community aspects. We, you know, Facebook groups were huge. People were like, you know, join our course, but then you get access to our exclusive Facebook group. We knew they were working, but what the problem with those was that all the engagement, all the interactive stuff was happening on Facebook. People would ask questions in there that if they were actually taking the course, they would know the answer, but they're asking in the group because they didn't want to take the time to take the course. So we took all the um, aspects of the Facebook group and put it into the platform. So now you have the the feed and the social you know community stuff inside the app itself so you're playing the game and you're also right alongside you know the community that you you can like in the static course you don't know how many other people are taking the course with you you don't know how fast they're going through the modules in the game you all the, everybody's entries are right there you can see the first person second person third person all their entries and you have examples of what yours should look like so there's that creative burden is taken away as well the more people that are doing it you're like oh I yeah can, that sounds like something i'd want to say so i'll just repeat that or whatever now i don't have to come up with it on my own you know, so it's easier and easier for people to participate. And then they can also see how fast people are going through, you know, the, the levels in the game, which pushes them to go faster as well. You know, there's been studies that show, like, you bring somebody in the gym, put them on a treadmill and tell them to run a mile to get a certain time. You bring them back just a day later, put them in between two people that are running really fast and tell them to run a mile. They'll beat their first time every single time because the people beside them are running so fast. It makes them feel like they need to keep up and they're going to run faster. It's the same kind of that thing with the gamification and, and with, Knowing and being able to see how fast we're going through the game, it just forces them like, oh man, I got to get on, I got to keep going because these people are like, you know, leaving me in the dust, you mm-hmm. know. So there's that uh, motivation, you know, as well. Awesome. Um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to put together, you kind of touched on that a little bit, but if you wanted to put together um, something from scratch, what sort of principles help you design uh, that type of game? Yeah, so the ones that we use like for our courses, and I didn't get to the like the like once we once we added the social aspect, we added um, you know all the uh, badges and the leaderboard and um, the tangible items like T-shirts and hats, journals, stuff like that. And uh, we were able to increase that seventeen percent completion rate to forty-one percent, so more than doubled the completion rate. So that's how powerful you know nice. that is, and especially yeah. if you have uh, you know high ticket thing on the back end to sell, you know you're gonna you're gonna crush it because it more than doubled our mastermind sales and more than doubled our high level coaching. Uh, sales. So just compliance, because if people buy something from you and even if they don't go through it, like if it's a course and they have access to it forever, they're not going to ask for a refund because they like, oh, I can log into the course anytime I want. It's sitting there. My money's right there. I can see where my money is. Uh, you know, I'm good. But if you come out with another offer, they're not going to buy because they're going to be like, well, I already spent 2000 on that course. I, I, let me go through that first. Then, I'm, then, you know, then I'll buy this new thing that they have. Right, they're not going to buy something else. Not, there's a small percentage that just buy everything and never go through any of it. That's just you know small percentage. But yeah, yeah. The, the majority, if they're sitting on something they haven't used yet in their mind, they're like, oh, I still need to go through this before I buy that. Um, but if you can get them to, to get through and actually not just consume the content, but actually like take action and develop the skill as they're going through it, now they've already gotten a result. They've already you know are getting they're making more money. They're doing something more you know easily or whatever. 
now you come up with something new, they have to have it. Like, they're going to buy it. They're going to jump on it. It's a no-brainer for them. Like, they've already you know, bought something from you, loved it, got the benefit from it. They're going to buy every, anything you put out, they're going to they're gonna buy. So there's huge benefit of getting them through and actually using your stuff. That's, so that's why we put it out there, right? We don't just put it out there from the buy and not use. We want them to actually do it. So by incentivizing them and giving them you know, that social support, giving them incentives um, and gamifying the process, we went from 17% to 41%. And then they bought our high-level stuff, you know, nine out of 10 of them. Yeah, so it's super, super, super powerful. Um, in fitness, it's harder. Like anything that you can, anything that's a linear process that starts off easy and gets a little bit harder as it goes, that's the best thing to actually like gamify as far mm-hmm. as the format that I created with my software. But you can do other, you know, there's a million ways to gamify something. But, you know, self help stuff works really well for my, for my platform and like any how to stuff, like how to run Facebook ads. You know, how, like if you're teaching them how to do certain exercises or something, it would work. But an actual workout program where you're doing the same thing over and over, you know, for a long period of time, it's not, it doesn't, it wouldn't um, work as well. That's why we're doing like a 21 day healthy habits. It starts with like, you know, drinking a glass of water first thing in the morning, super easy. Like it just takes 30 seconds to, to complete that first mm-hmm. level. Towards the end, it's like a half gallon or a gallon, depending on how much you weigh or whatever. Um, so it gets harder as it goes and it's very linear and they're learning skills and they're seeing how it can affect them positively, um, you know, throughout the game. And we've animated like all the videos. We did like a female voiceover, male voiceover. So that way, you know, it's easy to license. They don't have to create the videos themselves. Um, but um, something like that would work in fitness where you're incentivizing them taking action on healthy habits. That's very linear. But the actual workouts themselves, um, like a workout program, it's better to do like a challenge, you know, like, you know, and that's what, you know, trainers been doing challenges, you know, forever, mm-hmm. uh, which is a form of gamification, you know, in and of itself. Um, but you can incentivize them to bring people in as referrals. You can incentivize them you know, to lose a certain amount of weight or to come in a certain amount of days or, or whatever it is you, you, you want to do. Um, that would be the best way for, uh, for gyms to use it is just to incentivize taking action or whatever it is that, that, that they want them to do. They could give points for giving a testimonial, like, you know, you, mm-hmm. you could do anything like that. Yeah, definitely. To help you, to help you with your referral marketing and all that kind of stuff. One of, one of the things that for me that just thinking kind of as an outsider, cause I don't have a system or, or anything like that, but, um, I just as an outsider who likes to think about motivation and, and how gamification can be used to help sustain that is that it's really important to actually like, um, to, to give some of the best, um, incentive to really just putting in the work so that, uh, you know, if you're, if you're on a point system, like you should probably get the most points for showing up to your session. And, and completing that session or completing a certain number of sessions or in the case of like a martial arts school showing up to class and, and, and completing the class. Um, I think, I think though that's really good for using something like gamification to help inspire, uh, intrinsic motivation because the, 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 the focus and the reward is chiefly on the process rather than simply each, um, each, uh, achievement. So Not for sure. Yeah. Cool. So tell us about it's uh is it new move? Is that's the system that you put together? Tell us about new move and, and what it can do. Yeah, so new move is a it's a new startup company, but it's not that new anymore, but it's still a startup phase. Um and uh it's a gamification platform, it's a learning management system that I created. It's similar to like a course management platform, except we added gaming elements uh to it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, you you can set up a certain amount of stages like per game, um, where and a course would be like modules, right? And usually the modules have like a topic around it. And mm-hmm. then within the module and a course, you would have lessons in the game. You know, we call them levels. And then within the levels, there's a certain amount of moves, which are the action steps they have to take. So they get points for each move. And then you would complete the level. You complete, the certain, you complete, complete all the levels in the stage. Then you conquer that stage and you earn whatever prize um, for that stage. And then you move on. Um, there's a, the leaderboard. You know, we have a seven-day leaderboard. So if you just started, you can compare yourself with everybody else who started the same week as you. We have a 30-day leaderboard. So once you get out of that first week, you can start comparing yourself to people that are in the first month. And then we have a lifetime leaderboard because if it's like a 50-level game and you get on, you see somebody's at like 3,000 points and you're, like, you're never going to catch them. You know, it's not that motivating. But if you're like, now you're just looking at the seven days when you're within the first week, looking at the 30 days. And then after that, then it's like, oh, well, now I want to come up with a lifetime uh, leaderboard. Uh, we have where you can DM, you know, inside the app where you can send direct messages to other players. Um, sometimes you have to like, uh, you know, reach out and get help from one of the other players to conquer one of the, you know, the levels of the stages or whatever. Um, uh, you know, maybe they need like an accountability partner or something and then they have to sign off on like, yeah, they, they did everything for this level or whatever. Um, so there's uh, that community aspects there. We have like a timeline, like a, like a Facebook group. So every action that you do is pushed into the timeline so people can see 
who's taken what action and what their entries look like. And uh, they can comment and like on all, on all of those. Um, they can earn tangible items when they conquer either levels or stages, however you want to set that up. Um, and when they could also earn digital, like uh, one of them we have, every time they pass a stage, they earn a key, but it's like a digital key. And then once they get all five keys and they get access to this like free LinkedIn training or whatever. So it could be a digital, you know, bonus or whatever. Um, we had that set up in there. Um, and, uh, we, how we just um, have been in select like the last years, uh, partnering with them where they either fly out to us, we fly out to them and we film everything. We, you know, we help them map out their entire game because it's a different concept when you're talking like trying to do like one video for one major action item. So people do like a, a lesson, but in that lesson, there might be seven or eight action items. People consume all that content. They get all excited. They don't do anything. Then they move on to the next lesson. There's like six more things they could take action on. They get really excited and they move on to the next one. They finish their course and they're like overwhelmed. They don't know where to go back and start. And it's like this big feeling of like overwhelmed. They do nothing. They just consumed all this content. They have some ideas. They don't know where to get started. So mm-hmm. instead they go buy another course and start the process over again and start feeling good again. Same thing with books. People read books. They consume it but they, and they, have, they get really excited about what they learn. But then they read the next chapter, get even more excited, read the next chapter, they get to the end, like, oh man, like that was great, but I have no idea what to do now. So they buy yeah. another book. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. So with uh, with ours, they have to take like action. Like that was like, for example, on that 21 day like healthy habit challenge, the first level might be, you know, talks about the importance of hydration and how you get dehydrated while you're sleeping. The first, all you have to do is wake up, take a picture of your glass of water you're about to drink, drink it, take a picture of the empty one, and post it. Yeah, congratulations. Nice. You conquered level one. Uh, you're already taking action. You're already moving forward. More than 90% of people in any other course, they, they've just read about hydration and why it was important kind of thing. Yeah. And that, you know, that. So like, actual, they have to, that's why we call them the reality game. They have to take action in reality to earn virtual points and goods and prove that you took the action. That's good. That's really good. Um, do you, have you worked with, like um, businesses to put together like stuff for like learning and development or train like internal training and stuff like yeah, that. We have um, we have a solar company that uses our platform for new member or new employee like onboarding, and then they also use it for their sales training. And then nice. you can you can create chat groups like like you, like you can in like Instagram. So they have like their sales teams on different chat groups working together and competing against each other. You know, other sales teams. You know, see brings the most revenue, but all the training is in there. But they collaborate and everything right inside the app. So they. Um, the guy who owns the company was actually uh, my uh, late business partner was his first business mentor. So he already like knew the concept, knew about gamification. And mm-hmm. um, so he got it. So he was able to apply it really easily to what he was doing. Um, I've tried with some other businesses. That's not the vertical that I'm going in because I'm more in the internet marketing space. So course owners, stuff like that. They're mm-hmm. teaching how to do something where it's like how to run Facebook ads or self-help stuff or um, yeah. like how to invest in you know, buy businesses or um, how to write a book, how to write sales copy. Like that's the kind of games that we're creating um, right now. But that would be a vertical I'd love to go into. I just don't have, um, you know, the network or experience. And there's a lot of red tape to go through with some of those types of, uh, you know, types of businesses. Because I did talk to a lady who has like an acting school Mm -hmm. in uh, Hollywood. It's all online. Um, But the, the people get credits and stuff for it. So even if she used my platform, she couldn't call it a game or she would lose the accreditation, which is crazy. Wow. You know, so you still have to call it a course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. if it was gamified, like she wouldn't be able to promote it as a game or they, she would be kicked, kicked off the platform that I feel what it's called that drives like all the traffic for her. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> so there's a lot wow. of red tape and a lot of, yeah. you know, um, in, in those verticals, but, um, they, they find me, I just not actively seeking them out just because I have such a big network in the internet marketing space that I haven't, yeah. you know, fully, uh, marketed to yet. Yeah, that's cool. Um, where can people find you? They want to look yeah, you up. Jeff dot Sherman on Instagram, probably the, the best way. Um, and then newmove.com, n u m o v e dot com, if you want to learn more about what, what what we do in the platform. Um, and then just for fitness and trainer stuff, um, either techsweat dot com or fitnessmarketer dot com is uh, find everything you need to know about me when it comes to fitness and marketing. Awesome! Thank you for coming on. Awesome man! Thanks for having me. Enjoyed it. Thank you.